Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the uh, subject of today's video, uh, we're going to take a look at a case study for one of my clients. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's take a look at this latest case study. And in fact, this is a case study that has only just started. It's not a complete project, but something's come up in the case study. There's a little pattern that's turned up on the run chart. It's just a great little learning point. You, it's, it's a pattern that you often see in data, and it's just a great opportunity to learn how to read your run charts and to see patterns that are important to you. Now, this is um, a project. Look, it's a carriage. It's, it's a carriage plate. So what we're looking at is the frame at the back rather than the bearings that have been assembled onto it. And they have a problem with a particular, uh, a particular tolerance, a particular dimension. Now, just before we go in and look at the run chart, just something to say about the, uh, the problem statement. It would be great if the problem statement was much better. High variation in the magnet dimension. It would be much better if they said what the defect rate was. It would be much better if they quantified the variability in the magnet dimension. But uh, that's just a small point as we go in and look at the run chart. So let's take a look at the run chart. Now, they've, they've measured 180 pieces. And this run chart's come up. Now, I haven't put the tolerances on here yet. I'll do that for you in a second. But before we do that, just something to say about this. Your processes are supposed to be random number generators. So whenever you look at a run chart, you should be asking yourself a question. Is this a random number generator? Especially if what you're measuring is a completely continuous scale. So the ability to be anywhere on a particular scale. Now we happen to be measuring in millimeters and the, um, the way the graph is put together, look, it's moving in 0.02 of a millimeter. But what you are seeing, you are seeing the data move in these lumpy steps. So the data can only go on part of the scale. There's no ability for it to subdivide and to be anywhere other than on those lumpy sections that we've seen. So look, the data is, is sitting in lines. Look, there's a line of data there. There's a line of data there. Look, there's a, there's a line of data there. There's a couple of things that this, this often tells you. When you see data coming at you like this in these, these lumps, these lines like this, either there is not enough decimal places. So it could be that what we have here, this is about decimal, decimal places on the measurement equipment. Now this is the case in, in this case. It could also be sometimes something that the operator is doing. This especially happens when you have a tolerance limit and the operator has lots of results below the tolerance limit. He doesn't want to record bad news. So what he does is he puts each one dead on the limit. When you see results dead on bottom tolerance, or indeed the equivalent, especially on the same chart, results that are up there as well, dead on top tolerance, that's a sign something's wrong. The operator's doing that. But in this case, the way this data is moving in, in large jumps, it's because of the decimal place problem. So let's put some tolerances on this thing now, and it shows you the scale of the issue that this is going to cause. Clearly, we've got a problem because we've got lots of variability. So we have a problem that we've got this natural variability here. This is how big it is. It's not going to fit inside the tolerances, whatever we do at the moment. Um, but even if we removed that variability and we, we tried to get the results to fit inside the tolerance, we have a problem with our current measurement system because the current measurement system will only allow you to be in three places, top limit, mid or bottom limit. It doesn't allow you to be on a scale inside those two, inside those two red lines. So before we do any work to sort out the variability, they need to sort that out. They need an extra decimal place on their measurement system. Now you can see that just from the run chart. This is a common pattern. It does appear quite often. 
in projects. It especially appears when these days I'm dealing with companies that tend to be making high specification parts and although they're trying to machine things to a high specification they actually can't measure it to the specification they've been asked uh, to achieve so you see this quite often these days so it's a pattern that you're going to see now the lads that are doing this project have also done an MSA and the MSA agrees with this particular problem so let me show you how the MSA agrees with the results so if we go down just scoot to the measurement system result the resolution it says the resolution is at three what does that mean well it means this if they tried to draw a histogram they would only be able to see three columns on the histogram like that it's not enough columns to see the distribution properly the minimum this needs to be is five because with five columns you begin to see the distribution appear so this thing here which should be at a minimum of five is agreeing with the pattern that we're seeing on the run chart um, now there's work to be done they've got to sort out the measurement system they've got to sort out the variability in the uh, in the process it's a relatively straightforward fix straightforward thing to fix to be quite honest and I'm sure the lads will fix it quite quickly um, but they've got to sort the measurement system out first but it was just a great opportunity to show you a pattern that appears on a run chart quite a lot and it's telling you something instantly it's also a point that of course you wouldn't see that in the data so if you just looked at the data set it's unlikely you would see that in fact it's impossible that you would see that pattern just by looking at the data so it's making another great point that you really should put data onto run charts, put data into other pictures, draw pictures with the data, see the patterns, and then you'll learn something about your process very, very quickly, and then you can put it right. Draw patterns, learn something about your process. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed, anything to do with Six Sigma or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.